Hey guys, and welcome to another Football Manager video. I use a Python scoring system when I play FM that scores players on how well they fit the roles in my tactic. Plenty of people have asked in the comments how they can adapt this system to fit their tactic, which is what we'll cover today. There are 85 different player roles in Football Manager. In this video, we'll first run through how to add any of them to the scoring system. Then I'll sense check the numbers by calculating the best false nine in the world and comparing that to the best target forwards. After that, I'll run through the logic of the calculations in the scoring system more closely. You'll find timestamps if you want to skip around, and you'll also find links in the description with everything you need if you want to use this scoring system yourself. Let's get into it. All right, so here on the screen, what we've got is example code that I've put together for each and all of the 85 roles in Football Manager. So you can see the roles at the top, and all you need to do to see this is to go to this website here, scoreallplayers.neocities.org, the link's in the description, and you'll find this. So what we need to do now is put one of these roles into the scoring system. So if you've got the system set up on your computer, it'll be like this in Jupyter Notebook. And we run this to read the, the data that comes out of Football Manager and turn it into scores. And now all we need to do, instead of having the scores that are already in this Jupyter Notebook, we're just going to add a new one, which is one of these. And if we just pick a role, and for the sake of this video, what I'll do is I'll pick false nine on support. So what I'll do is I'll just click on this support and it'll go down here. Each and all of the roles has got some code and I'll come on later in the video to talk about why the code is this and not something else. Uh, if you look at the timestamps in the video later on, we'll talk about that. But at the moment, we'll just simply say this is the code we want to put into the scoring system. We want to run this. So if we go into the system itself, into the code, and then we just say, right, OK, we've got a calculation of a fullback score, a centre back score, a defence midfielder score, a Segundo Volante score, and so on and so on and so on. There's uh, wingers and so on. What we need to do is add an additional one. So what I'll do is I'll just simply click in here in the striker score and go into uh, here on Jupyter Notebook and just say insert cell above, which just creates a bit of space for us to put some new code into this. OK, so I'll go back to the website and I'll say, right, this is the code I want. So I'll just copy it and then I'll simply paste it in here. Simple as that. Now, what we need to do is we need to, as well as telling the computer to calculate in this way using these attributes a false nine score, we also need to tell the computer to output that onto the thing that we read when we're looking at the scores. And if we just look at what, to begin with, we, we, we're calling this, we've got the key attributes, we've got the green attributes and the blue attributes, I'll talk about this later, and it all gets summed up into this thing called F9S. And F9S is what the computer is being told to calculate and what we want to see. So we'll copy here F9S and we'll go down to this piece of code at the bottom, this one, which is the line of code that tells the computer what I want to see in the output. So we want F9S in here. So as well as GK, FB, F, B, C, B, V, O, L and STR, which is goalkeeper, fullback, centre back, secundo volante or defence midfielder and striker. We also want F9S. OK, so we just do that. And then we save the code. That now should have added the false nine logic to the code. And now let's just see if it works. So we'll go back to Football Manager and we'll go and simply output some data. So in this case, let's do, I've said all of the players in the world that earn 120,000 a week. Apparently, there are 2,000 of those in the database. This is at the very start of the game on the full version of Football Manager 2024. And we'll say, OK, download that to the folder in the desktop that I put data into. Uh, if you want to do this yourself and you haven't seen this before, if you look at my channel, there are set up guides for this. And then we just need to run the code. So we'll just go to the code here. We'll run all of the code. OK. And that code has now created this file, which we can open and look at. And what we will hopefully see is there will be a score. I'll just make this a little bit smaller so we can see it. Now we've added an additional column. There'll be a score on the right here called false nine. And this is the new role that we've added. This is the scoring system trying to have a view on who are the best false nines in the world, or specifically to use football manager language, who are the best false nine on support role players in the world and as you can see it thinks uh, with the score of 17.2 Mbappe and then Messi and then a gap 
and then Haaland and Salah and others. So this is a new score for a specific role that we have added. And so if in your tactic you use this role and you want to have a view on who's the best false nine, maybe not in the whole world, maybe it's of the players available to you in League One or the players available to you in a Spanish second division or whatever, this is how you can go about doing it. So I think a good way to sense check these numbers would be to add a role which is quite different but is in the same part of the field and see if it gives you different kinds of players. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the target forward role. So I'm going to go back up to the top of this and here we've got target forward on support or attack. So I'll put target forward on attack which is this code down here and we'll adopt exactly the same approach. I'll do it a bit quicker this time to show uh, adding that role. So we've just put the force nine in here and I'll do exactly the same thing. Insert cell below and I'll paste in the score for target forward on attack and then I need TFA which is this here. Okay so go down to this code and add TFA. Do it in quotes like that and click save. Okay so what we need to do is go into the game again and export the data again. It's the same data, but because the code wants to look at the most recent file that's been created, you just have to export it every time you want to use it. OK, so we run the new code and hopefully what the code will do is calculate not just the false nine this time, but also the target forward. And then we can sense check the players it suggests would be a good false nine as compared with the players it suggests would be a good target forward. So there's be the same scores for false nine and we see players here that are sort of diminutive players like Messi or Bernardo Silva had jump in reach seven in the game uh, and and so on uh, there's Erdegaard um, surprising they've only given Erdegaard pace 13 in this year's FM now let's try target forwards and let's see if we get different kinds of players okay so at the top of target forwards we see Haaland and then we see a Simhen and then we see other players coming onto this list as target forwards that were not on the list as force nine. So there's Lukaku, there's Giroud, there's Calvert-Lewin, there's Mitrovic. The code is asking the computer to calculate different sets of attributes. And when it does so, the players that are coming out at the other end of the scoring system, at least to my eye, look sensible. So I think that if you're in a lower division if you're in Bundesliga 2 or something and you're looking for a target forward it's going to try to give you the best player you can get who's a bit like Lukaku or Giroud or whatever if you ask it to give you a target forward and if you ask it to give you a false nine it's going to give you the best player that you can find that you can scout and all the rest of it that is a bit like Bernardo Silva or whatever they won't be as good but it will be the right profile it will be the right type of player so if you're trying to set a tactic and then recruit players to fit with the tactic, then using this code will help you do that. And it'll probably be more helpful and more interesting the less recognizable the players that you're looking at are. Okay, so how did I build the code that is calculating the scores? What I'll do here is slow right down and do this in slow, careful detail for those who are interested, because obviously with 85 roles in the game, I've had to take a general approach to calculating each and all of the roles. So I've taken the same approach to calculating all the roles, which means if I explain one role in close detail, then it should be clear how I've calculated all the roles. So if I go down to the false nine and then make this text a bit bigger. Okay, and so we'll look. I'm looking now at this piece of code. And what it's basically doing is it's saying that there are three groups of attributes, telling the computer there are three groups of attributes, the key attributes, the green and the blue. And then it's saying, once you know that, to calculate the score, take the key and multiply them by five, take the green and multiply by three, take the blue and multiply them by one, and then it divides them by a number that gets you back to a score out of 20. So I'll go to a spreadsheet here that runs through all of that. So to begin with, let's just look at what we mean by green and blue. So these numbers on the screen come from the football manager version of a very famous footballer indeed. And if we set to false nine using this and then clicking here, the role, then what we'll see is that some of the attributes are green and some of the attributes are blue. 
And the way I understand it is that the green attributes are the ones that Football Manager thinks are most important for the role. And then the blue attributes it thinks are important, but not as important as the green ones. I'll take these scores and just put them on the spreadsheet to make it easier. So we've got the acceleration in green, agility in green, for example, just as we've got here, balance in blue and so on and so on. Now, all I've done is I've put this here in this table, which is setting out exactly how the scoring system is calculating a score for Messi. It's not just as simple as taking the green ones doing something and taking the blue ones and doing something. I'm doing one other step. And the other step is to take some of the attributes and say, well, yes, OK, I can see the green and I can see the blue. But I happen to know or think I know that there are some attributes in Football Manager that are just important. They're important for all positions. They matter. They matter more based on where a player is on the pitch more than the specific role that they have. So they might be important if you're a false nine. They might be important if you're a target forward. It just matters if you are the striker. And I take that thinking mainly from this FM Arena forum post, which I've talked about in previous videos. Uh, and in particular, this weighting system that's been put together as I understand it, by a group of developers of a basketball game who spent a lot of time trying to back solve Football Manager and trying to figure out by position what are the things that matter. Now, this doesn't consider roles. It only considers positions on the field. So here's striker, which could mean a false nine on support. It could mean a target forward on attack. It could mean all sorts of things. And what this says is that acceleration is important, that pace is important, and that finishing is important. And I agree with this. So what I've done is taken these numbers and overlaid them into the green and blue coming out of Football Manager. So specifically for a false nine, if you look at this table in the bottom here, I said that's a striker role, as in it's right at the forward line and in the middle. And all the striker roles, be it false nine, target forward, so on, we're simply going to say that there are key attributes and those key attributes are acceleration, pace and finishing. And so if we go up here, which is the table that calculates the score, the false nine score, we're saying that acceleration, pace and finishing are the key attributes. Acceleration was green in the game. We're going to treat it as a special level, call it red. Pace isn't actually considered green or blue for a false nine in the game, or at least so far as you can see in the game. But I think I know that pace is important for all forwards. So we're going to treat that as red and then finishing it's blue here we're going to treat it as red and then we'll say to the computer for all the red ones or for all the key ones multiply it by five for all the green ones multiply it by three and for the blue ones multiply it by one those are completely arbitrary numbers i'm sure there are better more optimized numbers i could use i haven't tested them uh, again and again and again in fact i've just used these as rule of thumb numbers in previous iterations of this logic in my own say they seem to work i think they'll work here but if you're going to use this of course experiment with different numbers see if you can come up with different scores but here just to give an example it says for messi who has 16 acceleration multiply that by five gives you 80. do the same with all the other attributes it'll give you a number 791. and then if you look at the weightings we have three weightings of five this many ratings of three and this many ratings of one. And if we add all those numbers up, we get to 46. And if you divide the number over here by that 46, you will get back to a number which is a score out of 20. In this case, 17.2 for Messi. And if we go back to the uh, calculation we had before, which was a load of target forwards, and if we say the top false nines all being well, there we are, same number, 17.2 for Messi. So the weightings are rudimentary. They're not totally optimized, but I do think they're a sensible start. It's not intended that anyone is a slave to the numbers that this creates. That's not why I've uh, put it together. But if you really want to know who's the best player who could potentially be a false nine in your save, in any position in Football Manager, in any league in the game, I think this will give you a sensible list. And now, because I've gone through and adopted the same approach for every role in the game, I think that this will work for every role in the game. So if you want to know the best sweeper keeper on defend and you run this code it will look for agility and reflexes and then it will look for these attributes next and so on with the same five three one and it does that for every role in the game
I should add that the system I've used in my various videos to date, which is the one I've used in my saves for quite a long period of time, is road tested. If you use that from start to finish, I know that you'll have good results in the game and I hope you'll enjoy playing the game. This stuff isn't. I've never used some of these roles. Uh, I don't really know what a Carriero is, but it's the same overall approach and I'm confident that this stuff will work well and make sense. And it's adaptable to any tactic in the game. So if you are using this system, I hope that that gives some helpful guidance on how to use it. If you're not using the system and you've been uh, watching this video uh, and you don't intend to use the Python code, what you can simply do if it's helpful is you can click on any role in the game and just by looking at the code, just look at key, then green, then blue, you know, you'll get a list here of the attributes that I would encourage you to look at if you were just trying to figure out a player for uh, a, a particular role. Anyway, there's some thoughts. I obviously welcome comments on this. Uh, please leave them here. Or alternatively, if you want to reach me on Twitter, you can reach me there. Uh, that's in the description here. I think I'll leave it there for this video. I don't want to make this video too long, uh, but I do want to show the process of adapting the scoring system to a specific tactic in its entirety from start to finish. So I will do that. Look out for that. Subscribe if you want to see more. Thank you for watching this video, and I'll see you in the next one.